Today, where are the most in arrears postcodes across Australia? Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Well, that is posts covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Given the rising interest rate environment that we're now in, mortgage arrears will rise ahead. Indeed, our mortgage stress analysis, which is, of course, on a cash flow measure basis, tends to lead arrears rates by several months. So I was interested to look at the latest from the credit rating agency S&P Global, who released their first quarter 2022 market review. Now, this is based, of course, on the performance of mortgage-backed security loans, so it might be a bit warped compared to the total market, given the securitised loans are hand-picked and a subset of all loans. But their data does chime well with my own stress analysis. So I'm going to walk you through the top postcodes and also compare their results with our stress analysis. And as you will see, higher levels of mortgage stress based on cash flow aligns with defaults later. And remember, this is before any of the recent mortgage rate rises, which started in May 2022. So S&P Global shows that Maddington in Western Australia, postcode 6109, has the highest percentage of mortgage holders in arrears, at 4.67%. And that's consistent with the data from our analysis. So looking at my postcode data, postcode 6109 shows that we have around 42.9% of mortgage stress amongst borrowers. And we also have rental stress at 50%, which means that the total households in stress across all the categories at 52. And those red signals suggest to me defaults ahead. It's also worth noting, by the way, that net investment returns here are pretty low at 1.1%, despite the fact that the gross investment returns are at 4.2%. And in terms of my scenarios ahead, the best case is a small rise in house prices over the next 36 months or so, but the base case is a fall and the worst case is a considerable fall. Then the next one to look at is Dole's Point in New South Wales. That's postcode 2219. And there, 4.33% of households are in mortgage arrears. Now, in postcode 2219, which, by the way, does include Sansushi as well as Dolls Point and Sandringham, the overall stress level is at 51.3% amongst mortgage holders. Rental stress at 57%. And the bottom line is that there are significant pressures in the postcode. Indeed, among stressed investors, 46% are also struggling. As a result of that, over the next three years, the best case is a small rise in property prices if everything goes really well. But the most likely outcome is probably a fall. And the worst case of all would be a significant fall if indeed things go bad. I'd also highlight again that net investment returns in this postcode are at 0.4%. That's one reason why stressed investors are struggling so much. After that, Byford, that's Western Australian postcode 6122, was reported at 4.16%. Now in this postcode, that's postcode 6122, the story is one of mortgage stress. 65% of households are in mortgage stress. Rental stress is at 50%. And overall financial stress in household groups is at 71.5%. Despite that, there is a best case scenario of small price rises over the next three years. Not very significant, but some. But the base case is a considerable fall around 16% over three years. Or a worst case scenario, down about a third. And I'd highlight that the gross investment returns in this particular area are around 3.7%. The net investment returns are just 1.1%. Stressed investors are at that 21.4%, so maybe they're not doing too bad at the moment. But the question is, how long will that be before it changes as the costs of credit on investment properties continues to rise? Next is Hackenham in South Australia at 4.12%. That's postcode 5163. Now in postcode 5163, which includes quite a few suburbs as well as Hackham. 
the story is one of mortgage stress at 35.7%. So not as strong as some others, but that's partly because of the very rich mix of different suburbs in that postcode. In fact, we are expecting prices in this area, in the best case scenario, to be up about 17% over three years, although the base case is a small fall down 6% over three years, and the worst case is a fall of 24% over three years. Gross investment returns are at 4.2%, the net investment return is at 0.8%. And after that, Bankstown postcode 2200 in New South Wales came in at 3.97%. That's rounding out the top five list. Now in postcode 2200, Bankstown, we have 43.6% of households in mortgage stress. Rental stress is at 69%. And overall financial stress in the area is also very high. As a result of that, the best case scenario over three years is just a small rise in prices, up 3.4%. The base case is a fall of more than 20% and the worst case is a fall of 38%. And it's also worth noting that gross investment returns are at 3.3% but the net investment return is negative, down minus 0.1%. That's one reason why stressed investors are registering so strongly in this postcode. But also among the largest reported percentages were Broad Meadows in Victoria, that's postcode 3047, at 3.51%. Now, in this postcode, postcode 3047, the story is one of significant mortgage stress. Now, I should say that because of the plus or minus 2% on the accuracy of these surveys, it may not be quite at 100%, but it's certainly knocking on the door. Rental stress is also very high at 69%. The stressed investors are also registering. And so the overall financial stress metric based on cash flow measures are at 80%. As a result of that, the best case scenario over the next three years is a fall of 5.5%. The base case is a fall of 29% over three years on a cumulative basis. And the worst case is down 47%. I'd also highlight that gross investment returns are at 3.4%, but net investment returns are minus 0.5%. That's a significant loss. That again explains why so many stressed investors are in difficulty. And after that, Katoomba postcode 2780 in New South Wales at 3.37%. Katoomba postcode 3780. Now, of course, this does include quite a few other areas as well. And despite that, mortgage stress is at 58.9% in the postcode. Rental stress is at 34%. Households in financial stress still quite high. In our scenarios, we see a best case rise of about 7% over three years, the base case of down 16%, the worst case down 34%. Gross investment returns in investment properties here at around 3.3. Net investment returns are zero. And then Castle Ray, postcode 2749, again in New South Wales, came in at 3.37%. And if we look at Castle Ray postcode 2749, which also includes Cranbrook as well, we can see that 41% of borrowers in mortgage stress. We can see rental stress at 61.5% and overall financial stress at 49%. As a result of that, our expectation is that the best case scenario for prices over the next three years is a small rise, 3.7%. The base case is a fall of 19%. The worst case scenario is a fall of 37.8%. And I would make the point with these, of course, we are looking at our current survey data and calculating households' ability to make their mortgage or rental repayments on a cash flow basis. It doesn't mean they're going to default directly, but it does lay the foundations for that later, unless they take appropriate steps to trim back their spending, prioritise effectively, and manage their cash flow. Now, S&P Global Ratings says it expects mortgage arrears to grow in the months ahead due to tightening monetary policy. The number of mortgages in arrears hit a low in the first quarter of 2022, following a two-year decline during the pandemic. 
Competitive lending conditions and expansionary monetary policy settings were keeping mortgage arrears low. However, this is all about to change, said S&P Global Ratings Director Erin Kitson. Mortgages have fallen 0.73% in March this year, from 0.94% the same month a year earlier. And households' resilience is set to be tested, though, as multiple rate rises are passed on to borrowers in quick succession. Kitson said across the Australian RMBS sector, that's the residential mortgage-backed security sector, most borrowers should be well-placed to manage this transition given the build-up in repayment buffers, equity build-up in home loans, and the inclusion of interest rate buffers in debt serviceability assessments. However, some borrowers will struggle with the combined effect of higher mortgage repayments and inflationary pressures, he said. This is like to push up arrears in the second half of 2022, as borrowers work to reprioritise spending commitments to absorb higher non-discretionary expenses. This transition will be more pronounced in the non-conforming sector, given its higher exposure to larger loan sizes in pools and borrower types who are more sensitive to interest rate rises and cost pressures. And Kirsten said rising inflation would eat into household budgets, eroding real income. New borrowers with limited repayment histories will face the challenges of rising mortgage repayments and higher living costs, she said. As a result, consumer confidence is falling as households brace themselves for leaner times ahead with less discretionary income to spend. And let me just come back to my analysis because I want to underscore this. The leading edge of all of this is actually our mortgage stress analysis. It's a very accurate way of pinpointing where arrears are going to appear later. But there is delay, of course, because households will muddle through for a period of time, prioritise mortgage repayments, but ultimately may have to deal with this in a more aggressive way or indeed risk arrears. And it's also interesting to note that the arrears process in Australia can take one or two years. So we may well find arrears rising, but people still living in those properties for some time ahead. Unless, of course, the banks can convince them to get out now and sell. That is happening even as I speak. And in fact, I do note that some people have now decided to list their properties and get out before things get worse. This is certainly a very different scenario than we were painting just a few months ago, when, of course, rates were expected to stay low until 2024. And unfortunately, the Reserve Bank's indications then were so wrong that it's now creating significant pressures on households now. And I'm afraid we're going to expect more ahead. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.